I've seen quite a few of this question type on the GMAT over the years, and we'll definitely need pen and paper for this one. This is not the kind of data sufficiency question that you can just solve abstractly. The thing that really messes people up here is that they're giving you information in centimeters and seconds, but then the statements are in minutes, and it looks like the question is in meters. So we need to do some conversions here. And I think for most people, they don't feel comfortable taking the time to do that conversion work in the front end. And instead, they try to convert the statements individually into, I guess, centimeters and seconds in this case. But I think the trick is to do the opposite. I mean, if we have two minutes for this question, let's take a minute and 45 just to think about and convert and rephrase what the question is asking. And it really shouldn't take us more than around 10 seconds to evaluate the statements. Uh, so let's see what that looks like right after the intro. Okay, so we have a rate of 120 centimeters per second. And if I wanted to know what that looks like per minute, well, a minute is 60 times as long as a second. So if you could travel 120 centimeters in a single second, in a minute, you'd be able to travel 60 times as far. So I have 120 times 60, whatever that is, centimeters per minute. Now, if I want this in meters, and I know that there are 100 centimeters in each meter, then this number that I have for centimeters is way too big if I wanted it in meters. I would actually have to reduce it by two zeros, right? Divide by 100 to get the number of meters per minute. So I'm going to re reduce the two zeros that we have here. It wasn't that convenient. And we end up with just 12 times 6 meters per minute. Now the question wants to know whether or not it was less than 90 meters. So how long would it take if it was exactly 90 meters? To find the amount of time that it would take at 90 meters, I would have to divide the distance of 90 by the speed, which is 12 times 6. So 90 divided by 12 times 6, let's see, I can reduce the 6. So it would be 15 over 12. 15 over 12, that's 5 fourths. Now, since the statements are in decimals, maybe we should convert 5 fourths into a decimal. So it's like 4 fourths, which is 1, plus another fourth, which is 0.25. So this question is asking, was the distance less than 90 meters? What it's really asking is, was the amount of time less than 1.25 minutes? So that whole thing could take close to two minutes, and that's perfectly fine because now that we know that the question is really asking was the amount of time less than 1.25 minutes, we can go to the statements and evaluate them very quickly. Statement 1 tells us that the time was less than 1.2 minutes, so does that mean for sure that it's less than 1.25 minutes? Yes, any number that's below 1.2 is below 1.25. So statement 1 is sufficient on its own and we can eliminate the answer choices that claim that it's not. So B, C, and E are gone, and we're down to A or D. Now, statement two tells us that the amount of time was more than 1.1 minutes, but we wanted to know whether it was under 1.25 minutes, and the problem with more than 1.1 is we don't know which side of 1.25 that puts us on. We could be either below 1.25 or above 1.25, so statement two is not sufficient on its own, and the correct answer is A. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.